This is With the Cars and the Fashion. Get it at otfi.com slash fashion. And I can fuck it in, uh, in the Fashion Mountains. Who am I going to fuck in my iPod? Meatloaf, that's who. <laughs> It's me, Meatloaf. <laughs> Meatloaf. I'm, I'm dumb DTF. I'm DTF in your iPod. I sing everything I say. Come on, everybody. I'm Meatloaf. <laughs> but he won't do that. But I won't do that. Just kidding. We're in the iPod now. No rules. Just right. It's me, Bray Wyatt. I'm here, too. I'm in your iPod. But I'm in your iPod. And I'm down to bar. We're all <laughs> Are you familiar with the one eight seven seven cards for kids? K A R S cards for kids. Have you ever heard that? Uh, yeah, that's like a weird lawyer, right? Me, me, low, and I tasted everyone, and they were all yummy. But I would like to taste that. <laughs> Just kidding, I will totally taste that. Meatloaf's a meatloaf slut. And I don't give a fuck. Pussy party! Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. Is that the dumbest shit ever? That's so fucking stupid. Well, we're not gonna beat that! But we'll do our best to try! Because it's Tuesday night! And that means it has got to be go time for Night Attack. Hello, you beautiful bastards. I'm Brian Brushwood, live in Austin, Texas, joined, as always, by my BFF and OAK. It's J-R-Y, Justin Robert Young. How many uh, faces have you punched? Oh, jeez. Uh, 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 I, man, I remember I was Wrong punching. answer. Bryce Castillo, how many paces have you... Uh, paces? How many paces have you punched? I uh, a lot. I walk a I walk pretty much every day. And you punch paces. I do punch the ground. Right, That's right. why my J- Justin, you, you got a better answer. <laughs> okay. Wait, where is where is pace made? <laughs> pace? New pace? York City. <laughs> Get a rope. Hey, wait, hold on. We were talking about this before the show. What is up yeah. with like the instant desire to publicly associate your brand with the lynching of a human being? For the crime of buying salsa from an incorrect state. So, uh, for those of you who were born 11 days ago, uh, uh, there were these old commercials for, wait, was it for Pace or was it for? Yeah, no, it's Pace Picante Sauce. In fact, actually, the original line was New Jersey, and they all go, New Jersey, get a rope. And, And unfortunately, New Jersey was sick of being the butt of jokes. And so the mayor of New Jersey, because it's a city in my imagination, city, said, yeah. said, Old New Jersey City. Yeah, said, Hey, knock it off. Oh, oh, here it is. Here's the original. Hey, Cookie, more Pecani sauce. This ain't paste Pecani sauce. What's the difference? Cookie. Paste Bacani sauce is made in San Antonio with fresh vegetables and spices by people who know what Bacani sauce is supposed to taste like. This stuff's made in New Jersey? New Jersey! Get a rope. Pick up the original. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that escalates Holy very shit. quickly. I don't remember it being like it just cuts to this Robert Rodriguez <laughs> fucking horror film where yes. he just gets murdered. <laughs> fucking Cookie is dead. <laughs> Yes! For the crime of getting picante Look sauce. The seriousness on his face. <laughs> He's ready to straight up murder him. That's the face of death. Well, and so it's they the changed it. Death. It was New Jersey for like 20 minutes, and then they changed it to New York City, which is the one that most people remember it by. Bonnie, did, did you ever... Uh, Bonnie, the invisible wife, has just joined us. Um, <clears throat> Hello. Do, do you remember the paste picante sauce, like, let's murder a person because they bought picante from the wrong state? Yes. And what that was, was what was that state? Well, New York City. See? That, yeah. That was, the, that was the one they changed it to. Oh, what was it originally? Fake news. Fake news. You were the subject. Fake originally, news. Originally, it was uh, uh, Montpelier, Vermont. <laughs> Get a rope. Oh my Get a rope gosh. is so dark. Just no. is, is legitimately like that's like some hostile shit. Like that's like some shit. Like like it bring out the gimp. Get a rope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh my gosh! You know, was that Justin in the video? Ju- Justin Robert Young. Yeah, can can we look it at do, that? It does look. actually look at side by. <laughs> this does look like Justin when he had the handlebar. <laughs> Somebody get a picture of me, me and the mustache earlier this year. We'll fucking go side by side on that. I might. Wait, hold on, wait a minute. Here, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me. Just shave your face real quick. Just, just shave, just shave it down to that, that awesome. Oh uh, uh, uh. Oh my god! It looks a lot like Justin. Also, Justin looks like he could be the hero from uh, Muse's Knights of Cydonia video. If you've seen that. Yeah. Nah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Oh my God, I'm just seeing it now because I had to look at the podcast. Wow. Uh, although I look skinnier, that's nice. So that's a good thing for me. Um, <laughs> I look like a murderer who would wantonly murder over uh, who, where my picante came from. I mean, that's a legit reason to murder someone. Uh, hey, Bonnie. Oh. Yeah. Can we, can we just can we just uh, tag jokes all night with get a rope or, or is that a <laughs> no, problem? No, <laughs> no. There are no. so many jokes that would not go okay if yeah. you hashtagged get a rope. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna self-report. Bryce, give me give me the give me the music. That's that's inappropriate. I should. <laughs> oh, you're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not ready for the front page, Justin. Not ready for the front page. I know. I know. I should have. I should have thought about my inner Hank Williams Jr. and and understood that that's not a good thing. Oh my gosh. Uh, Bonnie, you just got back from uh, uh, visiting family members uh, at the fringing edge of sanity. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what? I what? haven't told you. Oh no. Go I on. Hope this doesn't get me in trouble. What? Well, but, uh, uh, pro tip, your grandmother very likely does not listen to the podcast, so I'm thinking nope. we're good. Oh, no, 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 no. Not nope. with my grandma. Get a rope. But with any... Get a rope. <laughs> but with any That's of the, the audience. Last one. That's the last one. No more jokes that end with get a rope. <laughs> You're the number one infringer. How do you also get to be the enforcer? That's fine. I'm Don't enforcing worry. it no more. That's right. it. We're done. We're out of that business. All right, Bonnie. Yeah, I forgot what it was like to be a giantess. A giantess? Yeah. Oh. I mean, you know, there's a whole subculture of men who are attracted there's to very, very tall women. There's a specific usage of that word, Bonnie. Yeah, no, I think she knew exactly what oh. she said, oh. what she meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. No, I walked down to uh... Hey, man, we, we've read David Sedaris. Uh, yeah. we're, we're hip to the giantess movement. <laughs> I go down there, and I'm, like, enormous. Like, everybody's... Very God, short. We, we just super aroused the whole time at how Me? much powerful you were. No, everybody else was. They were just like, oh, look everybody at her. else was aroused. I was by too you. busy trying not to step on everybody. I was <laughs> like, I'm huge. I'm so tall. Hold on. Wait, I missed. I missed. I missed this part. What the hell are you talking about, Bonnie? Why were you so much taller than everybody? <laughs> because it's because of the, the value. Graphic. I don't. Everybody's small. Everybody's where, like shorter than me. In the Texas Rio Grande Valley, there are a lot of <laughs> Hispanic populations that are smaller than Bonnie's uh, long, but tall. Even my like really white cousins are shorter than even me. Even white people. It may, yeah. may, maybe the gravity is heavier there, and it that causes everyone to be shorter. Be. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a strange feeling. And then everybody okay, Now, by looks strange, up. do you mean like like arousing and exciting? Was it was it yeah. awesome it to was, be so was tall? It strange? You were just like in the middle of a conversation trying to hustle them in a game of basketball? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would You're like, to. all right, hey, listen, Grandma. I know we're all having a good time, but also, twenty bucks says that I can beat four of you guys. So, uh, what do you think we can go ahead and line up this money? Uh, so, so you you did not hustle anyone? No, I didn't hustle anyone. Boo. No, no, I didn't. Mm. I was too busy not trying not to step on everybody. If you if you if you did if you did hustle them though, like, what would your pitch be? Like, what would your, your your tall hustling pitch be? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't I, even know pre- how to pretend go. We're, pretend we're at okay. a bar. We all just yeah. had a round. <laughs> uh, we uh, all uh, just uh, did Brian, shots. Brian, uh, uh, pre- pre- go ahead and pretend you're short. <clears throat> I'll, you I'll mother, pretend. You <laughs> motherfucker. I'm pretty... God, God damn it. Yeah. See, I think okay, I married okay. Brian because it's familiar territory. No, that's fine. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of people say I'm short, but you know what? I ain't as short as people shorter than me. I'll tell you what. That's what's great about being not that short. I take a drink. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm as short as I am rich here in the Rio Grande Valley. I'm always looking for some action. Yeah, man. Isn't that our saying here in the Rio Grande Valley? Short on inches, long on dickage. That's our that's our motto here at the Rio Grande Valley. We got we got 
dicks like our bank accounts. Big and fat. Yeah. But we're really also, short too. Also, our dicks are conservatively invested in highly diversified portfolios. Yeah, index funds for our dick dick dex funds. ETFs. The F stands for fund. fuck your mom. Uh, mutual funds. Anyway, uh, who's who's here? Oh, tall lady. What's going on? Oh, there's some lady from the north. Hey, lady. What's up, Brianna Tarth? We don't yeah. normally get a lot of ladies from the north who are so super tall like this. Hey, hey, how's the weather up there, old, old bean? <laughs> The pole sprout that oh. leads to a giant's house. Old bean pole sprout that leads to a giant's house. Is Boom, the giant's classic a real brand diminutive uh, rich people singer? <laughs> wow! Can you excuse me? I'm trying to walk through. <laughs> hey man, I've seen the movie Goonies. Here's a baby Ruth. Take this. Get out of here. Hey, what are you, the rock monster from Never Ending Story? <laughs> that sounds like some shit a tall person would watch. Yeah, man. They, they look like big, strong hands, but they ain't nothing against us. We're yeah. super men who are they're, shorter they're than tiny, you. We're tiny as shit, but we're bigs. Our, our, our dicks are huge. Okay. Can also, I, can our bigs. Can I just get also real here? We got, we got really reliable lighters. There really was this conversation, not about the rhyming dicks. But this guy was all talking about how he was duding up because he was a cowboy or whatever back in the day and how he got his 500. All right, can, can we talk about this? Like, like the whole okay. ranch so, and blah, diddy, blah. I mean, he was he was. Why is it socially this. appropriate to dress like a cowboy any day except of Halloween? Like, I can't dress as a fireman mm. or a police chief. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> any other day of the year about Halloween, mm. but I could dress as a cowboy at any time. That's interesting. I mean, in Texas. Otherwise, you're going to get some stares if you're dressing like a cowboy every day. I don't know. Do people actually try to, like, do the job of a cowboy just by dressing up? Like, are they sneaky I mean, like what's that? What's the job of a cowboy? You smoke a cigarette, you stand by a sunset, you're done. You, you, <laughs> you, you did a whole day's work. Yeah, you offer to kill your cook because he used the wrong salsa? Like, it's a regular cowboy. <laughs> you, you insist on lynching somebody from being from New York? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, bada bing bang. Sounds legit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, <sighs> that was my experience. Hello. So, uh, you have no car now, Justin. No, no, I don't, uh, and, I, and I didn't use my car to get to to Philadelphia, where I, I was at. I was at PAX. That was weird, man. PAX is a PAX is a big uh, ass convention. This is the first time they did one for uh, for tabletop only, unplugged. PAX unplugged is what they called it, and uh, I think they're smart about doing conventions. Those guys, yeah, I, I, they really got it got it down. How so? Well, like I don't know, it's just like. Fucking, they had a shit ton of people show up for a, a the first time they've ever run a convention because they're just such a gigantic brand name, and there's like a lot of hungry people that want to go to a PAX on the East Coast, you know. So, uh, I I I pressed play on your how to lose forty thousand dollars on Kickstarter, uh, and then uh, left it running in the background while I did other stuff. But it looked like you guys had everybody engaged the entire time. Looks like you guys slayed it. No, it was really, really good. Uh, it was uh, super fun. The the talk went really well, and uh, uh, we totally uh, didn't uh, start just like pooping uh, in our pants on stage, which was which was also a bonus. That was that was a good thing that because it would have been weird, right? We're up there and we're like, anyway, so we made twenty thousand dollars via social media. <laughs> <laughs> And then we just started pooping, and we never stopped, and it was infinite, and then it was like a medical thing. And they See, it seems like a very specific anti-fantasy that you're running through right well, now. I mean, then we'd be uh, kept in, uh, you know, uh, cages and studied for science, and, they'd, and then there'd be one scientist who'd be like, I think we could make a lot of money off this. And then, you know... Uh, but there's a they, good scientist that's like, no, this research should go to stop humans from pooping their pants always. Not exactly. realizing 
realizing that you guys are actual humans as and well. And meanwhile, the bad scientist kidnaps us, and, and we're, like, you know, kept in some weird paramilitary uh, base, and there's, like, a, a lot of businessmen, and they're like, are we on schedule, uh, uh, Dickinson? And then he's like, he's like, you better back off, because he's really going to try to pull a coup at, at the end and, like, take over the evil paramilitary organization. But meanwhile, one of you, pants shitters, like, has oratory skills that might indicate that you have the potential to be president at some yeah. someday and so but they gotta yeah. shut that down right at the outset well because initially there was one of the guys who was like have you seen how that guy talks he could be the president of the united states if his butthole wasn't a constant portal for shit uh and and then uh uh we'd be like uh uh, like, OK, well, uh, obviously that's a thing, but uh, that guy would get shot because they're like, we're not here to be president makers. We're here to make poop infinite. And, <laughs> and meanwhile, so as somebody's that? like, like he belongs in a museum. And then he's, yeah. he's, he's using his whip on people all around. Yeah, because it's the second one where all the Indian kids are in the mine. And <laughs> well, that went a little sideways. So anyway, uh. <laughs> Well, that didn't happen. But anyway, the talk went well, and we did a great live PX3, uh, live politics, politics, politics the next night. Uh, and uh, then tomorrow I leave. Are you doing any uh, any traveling for, uh, for, for Thanksgiving? I mean, all your family is fairly centrally located. No. As a matter of fact, I was totally clear on the travel front for the rest of the year, and it got me in a good groove. I'm in the middle of like three weeks of, of being good about working out and eating healthy and so on. But... It looks like there's a potential TV thing that I'm going to run off and, and shoot a, uh, some footage for at the beginning of December. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, <clears throat> so, that's but in the like meantime... A little, uh, like a little, uh, little, uh, little old tease there. Oh, like yeah, you're, yeah. You're teasing that's, everybody. That's what they call the D-man teaser that's, <laughs> uh, that's what Sheila called it. She was my 43rd wife. <laughs> <laughs> she uh she called it a teaserooney. That's uh, uh teaserooney at first meant when I would get halfway through coitus and leave to play Madden ninety seven, but eventually she started to label it anytime I would say hello. She said, Ah, the old teaserooney and I was I was very emasculated, so I divorced her. But then you got a show? <laughs> Yes, uh, the show in which I talked about all my ex-wives. Oh, okay. Well, let's give us give us the first one. <laughs> well, the first one was... What was the pilot, D-Man? <laughs> the pilot was... Oh, oh, by the way, D-Man, what does the D stand for? <laughs> <laughs> the D stands for divorce. <laughs> okay, cool. That's a great thing to set up for uh, new viewers who are watching us for the first time and aren't familiar with this long-running character. Anyway, D-Man, uh, uh, so what, what was what was the first uh, the pilot for your, the, your, your show? The, the pilot was a show called First Love, First Marriage. We shot it when I was uh, 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 17. You know, I remember your register being a little lower, D-Man. I, I don't know what, what happened no. to your You used to have a pretty pronounced <laughs> accent, D-Man. Well... <laughs> yes, I've. I my latest wife has uh, been trying to encourage me to uh, sound more, as she calls it, uh, middle class white. But oh, oh, okay, sounds upper class. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, if you uh, <laughs> do you think that that's the kind of difference that would lead you to uh, to maybe the ending of the relationship? Oh yes, well, we uh, the first series ended when. It could not be agreed upon the method of contraception that we would use. Oh, okay. What was your choice? <laughs> My choice was to have lots of sex and always pull out before I ejaculated. And what was hers? To not have sex at all. And then what did that end? Uh, how did uh, what did that? Well, lead it, to it ended when the viewers stopped watching the show because we never had sex and nothing <laughs> interesting ever happened. And I realized my first marriage being a reality show was not a good idea. Oh, okay. Well, then uh, uh, after the show was done, uh, did that have any repercussions on the relationship? <sighs> we had a lot of sex, and I'm pretty sure she got real pregnant. 
Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, that's a wrinkle to the D-Man character that we weren't aware of. So oh, if, yeah. I were trying they... to end the, if, if, if I were trying to end the bit on a familiar <laughs> note, what then happened in the relationship? Oh, well, everything was great until finally we got divorced. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, hot damn. Give a rope. (laughs) (laughs) Give a rope? Bonnie wants to murder this No, we're calling. No, 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 no. Unacceptable. Hold on. I (laughs) wouldn't roll the rope. (laughs) Unacceptable. (laughs) Oh, God damn. Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to uh, 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 support this show, you can go ahead on over to patreon.com slash... Night Attack, which is where uh, you can kick in whatever you would like to kick in. Make sure that this show continues to roll on in the best possible fashion. Uh, oh man, we got over a thousand people supporting this show. This is this is this is an amazing uh, thing. They had the all big thank you patrons uh, thing this week on on Twitter, and we would like to take this time to thank all of you for making this show what it is. Uh, uh, the the fact that this Patreon happened. Uh, uh, changed both of our lives uh, uh, immediately, kind of overnight in terms of making podcasting more of a focus. And now, being on the front page of Twitch, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, patreon.com slash night attack. Uh, Bryce, what do they get for being a patron? Well, if you're a patron, you get early access to the pre-show and the after show, which come out a few days uh, before they hit everybody on Saturday. Plus, you get all of that in an RSS feed, one mega RSS feed. So if you're a big RSS feed fan, you can get Three Man, hours. I, I'm just such a fan oh. of RSS feeds. Like I don't even care what's on them. I'm just like, ah, mm-hmm. it seems like a way to sub- a really simple subscription feed, uh, like a syndication even. Mm. And uh, yeah. I just love it. I want to fill it, and so you can get your own personalized. It's your own RSS feed, so you don't even have to deal with passwords and usernames and stuff. Uh, and so you get three hours of show versus the one and a half hour or so of uh, the show every week. So yeah. Nope, you get the pre-show, the post-show, and all the show in between. But meanwhile, more importantly, you've reached the portion of the program in which we shout out our most favoritest people on the planet in a segment we like to call... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Night Attack new Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of... (laughs) Man, I don't know what this person's doing. Sounds like a guy to me, but then again, I might be wrong. I'd like to think maybe he's a female robot detective on the moon. Female. Oh, that's a good one. Hey, hey, watch it, uh, uh, Peter Weir. Or wait, what's his name? <laughs> Andy Weir. Oh. <laughs> You're saying Peter Weller, the guy who played RoboCop. <laughs> uh, yeah, watch it, Peter Weller and Andy Weir's butt baby. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, all right. Uh, I don't. You know what? Let's say. Let's assume this person is on the moon, as he or she is transforming it, making it a habitable environment in which they are creating a steak restaurant on the moon that serves one dish. What's that one dish, Justin? Steak nuggets. Steak nugs. Thank you for the steak nugs. Shaz, Shaz Rystet. Shaz Rystet. We love your steak nuggets, Shaz. Shaz Rystet. Shaz, 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 Getting them steak nugs. Thank you, Chaz. If you want to be part of the uh, Patreon name chan corner hour, go ahead and adjust your pledge up or be a new pledger. And uh, Brian picks from everybody that did that this week to pick what name will be on uh, on the uh yeah, but if you want it, if you want a faster way to get to the front of the line, just pipe Thank in you, right now. Fun. Pipe in uh, right now, because it's the one time we go full on webcam, girl. Hello, Sunbun. Thank you, Sunbun. Uh, you, sun. You're so cute. So anyway, I I was uh, in in Philadelphia, and you know, I've been traveling a little. Thank and- you, Deliona. Oh, it's all over my face. Ah, oh, so cute. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, at a certain point, you know, there's there's just a lot of travel fatigue that sets in. Thank you, the bio cow. 27 ejaculates on my face. Thank you. Uh, because, 
you know, it, it, you love being all these different places, and you wouldn't want to be anywhere else. But obviously, you're just getting on the Thank plane. Thank you, M. Jerson. Oh my God! Oh, it burns in my eyes. Oh, M. Jerson. So like tomorrow, I got to be up. I mean, our plane leaves at five thirty. Thank you, Curtis Larock. Oh my God! You say it tickles. It's so cute. Uh, you know, because uh, number one, we're gonna miss the big uh, flight. You know, the big the travel. Thank you day. to ride out. Oh my God, I've never done this before. But then we're also <laughs> going to uh, just be up super early, which is obviously not what you want to do. Oh, Ren Igu, how oh, nobody's ever done this. Uh, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, so you know, it, it's just something that that you got to weigh the, the the pros and the cons, right? You know, yeah, I know you, you, you got to get. Uh, thank you, Jay Rowan. Get a rope. Cat. You suck, cat Trey. <laughs> <laughs> this this is the only acceptable context for get a rope. <laughs> thank girl. you, I see you. Get a rope. Yeah, <laughs> get a rope. You suck, cat. Get, get a rope. rope. <laughs> that's the sequel to treat yourself hashtag get a rope his ropes like yes. that's what it's like thank oh, you thank ship you, thank you thank ship locked oh so many ropes oh my god oh ropes. uh hey by the way uh <laughs> somebody says that us doing this makes webcam girls seem dirty <laughs> No, we're we're bringing dishonor on an otherwise honorable and understandable profession. Exactly. Oh my God. That's actually true. I was like, thank you, Ben Franklin. Thank you for the sob. Thank you. Oh, it's so, it's so cute. Get a rope. Thank you. So cute. Okay. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, a famous actor is going to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're not wrong. Shall we bring him right here on the air? Uh, your friend and mine, uh, one Greg Grundy Gr Grunberg. Are you live? Are you? Are we? Are we connected? Uh, yeah. Are you Greg Grobodobodo? What's up? Yeah, man? Greg Grobodobodo, dude. It's so good to see you again. How have you been, man? Oh, I've been great. I'm so glad to see you guys. So, What's happening, uh, dude? Uh, tell me about tell me about your new podcast. I saw that uh, uh, you 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 have a new podcast. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Look, look at the hat I'm wearing. Whoops. Let me turn oh, that he's already around. got more and better merch than we do. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> look, right. it's not real for me unless there's a T-shirt or a hat. Um, it's called An Actor, A Comedian, and A Musician. Walk into a bar. It's me. It's Kirk Fox, who is one of the funniest guys in the world, and Nick Marzok. And if you don't know Mick, Nick Marzok, go to, uh, go to SoundCloud and check him out. But, yeah, the first episode's up. It's on iTunes. It's on uh, Stitcher. It's it's uh, you know it's kind of everywhere right now, and we're recording the second one tomorrow. And you guys will definitely be on the podcast as oh, uh, payback we'll, we'll, for sure. We will yeah. be very 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 happy to be on the show and plug it. Uh, although I don't know what else we'll say about the show once the title takes up all 280 characters. <laughs> <laughs> An actor, a musician, thing, a comedian. Though. The idea is to do to do shows live in bars. You know, we, I have a bar. Brian knows that. I've got a bar in, in, in L.A. Dude, uh, your space bar. is amazing. The, the oh, no, no, I've been space. there. It, 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 yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's so exciting. Yeah. So it's pretty uh, cool. And, and so the idea is that we're always going to have, you know, comedy. We're always going to have music and then obviously talk about all the shit that's going on in the world. And there's a lot of shit to talk about right now. Which Man, is this, see, this Justin, this seems like the kind of thing that we could pull. Like, like, can we get two keys, two hands on the keys, and turn the knob on? Let's both fly to L.A. to do this. Oh, oh, Please God, do. yeah. I mean, listen, it's it's cheap for me. I'll do it right now. What do you want? You want to? Do you want to go? I mean, I'm flying on points fly, anyway. I've got unlimited airline points. The only problem is that I'm 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 lowest tier status on everything. But I'll get there. Sure. Hey, fly with the cattle, no problem. You know you can stay at the uh, the Grunny Mansion uh, when you get here. So yeah. we love you. Yeah. Uh, you guys are welcome. All right. Um, yeah, I got uh, that, and then I got a movie that I'm starting in uh, January, and I've got to plug the uh, Kickstarter. It's all fully funded, but we're doing the Kickstarter to to uh, get the gaming community especially aware of this. It's called Max Reload and the Nether Blasters. It is the coolest freaking movie. These two guys that you're looking at right here. They, uh, Scott and Jeremy, are just geniuses. They're in Arizona. They've been doing gaming content for all of the the biggest gaming companies around, and they've written a script and they're directing it. And it's th there's a lot of great people in it. I committed to it. I'm I'm producing it with them. And I got uh, my buddy Kevin Smith is going to be in it, and a great cast. It's all about old video games and and being you know kind of taken over by those video games and what happens if you get lost in it. And uh, and you you've got to fight your way out. It's it's really cool, and I'm excited to uh, to shoot it. And and there's so much free 
crap that the gaming companies are giving away on our Kickstarter. Go check it out. Dude, Thanks. right yeah. on. Uh, speaking of which, uh, uh, can you I, – I, I, I saw peripherally that you were doing the show with Kevin Smith on AMC. Uh, 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 forgive me if I uh, – that was the right network, right? It was AMC? Yes, produced by Harvey Weinstein. Go ahead. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> so, moving right along, uh, Justin, what's the game we have today? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, uh, um – let, let it be known that I didn't say the joke that we had set up as a runner <laughs> earlier. Uh, 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 well, uh, Bryce, uh, uh, you've been working on this thing for a while now, right? We, we, we are doing Night Attack Court. Yeah, we're doing Night Attack Court. This is all built off of someone just making a Photoshop of Night Attack <laughs> and uh, Night Court. <laughs> Uh, so we've even we've even if you haven't oh, seen, oh so we have an intro right we do all right here we go so this no, wait, is wait, our wait. not only do you have an intro your tease that you did of me <laughs> and alias the, the back of the van and alias yes which, which you can find on any uh, bear site if you can do a couple of numbers on bear. any bear site oh my god look at that child from ten years ago jeez I love that. <laughs> Dog heading of bullshit. Where are you on? I don't have back legs anymore. <laughs> so, so we've had people. Sing. I think it's pretty clear what the bit is it, from now. It's super yeah. obvious just what we're doing. I think it's really it's great that we were able to to work Grunny into the uh, in, into the credits there. Obviously, you know that was that was a seamless the, uh, transition. The red carpet photo from Star Wars. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. It was either going to be that, or you're going to have Mike TV's face on on yeah. screen for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we've had people send in the cases that they want adjudicated. Uh, and and so uh, Brian and Justin, you guys are going to trade off being prosecution and defense of. The cases that are be put of in front of us, and okay. Then, and then Greg, at the end, we hope hope that you can be our judge to decide what. So, so, happen. so you're Harry Anderson for all of these. Um, sometimes I'm John Laroquette. Sometimes I'm the blonde chick. Sure. <sighs> cool. And I'll yeah. sometimes be Charlie Rose, and oh, I'll geez. sometimes be Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Dude, oh. hey, by the by the way, uh, qu uh, uh, press pause, quick side journey. Well, yeah. what's yeah. what's it like to be in in like like you are in that world and these are all real people to you that one by one are just being, you know, uh, paintballed with the stink yeah. of of weirdo on them. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, sub question. Is there anything you'd like to break here live on the show? Is there <laughs> anything <laughs> you want to get out in front now. of? Uh, well, I mean, I you know I do have a graphic novel, and I also love whiskey. And you put those two things together, and you have the uh, the Kevin Spacey starter kit. But <laughs> here's the thing, I I really um, I, I think it's it's time that this shit stops. And we've all heard about it over the years, and it's the casting couch, and it's the manipulation of power. And unfortunately, you know, uh, women have a hard enough time in entertainment breaking through and getting the roles that they want, and to have to deal with all this shit. And, and you know, I know, I know it sounds like, oh, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm speaking the way everybody feels, but it really is true. So as, as much of these guys that have to take falls, you know, take the fall, fine. This is, this is, uh, imagine the guys. And, I, and by the way, I know several more that are shaking in their fucking boots right now, waiting for that call to come. And I know because, several yeah, that, women that thing. have called is Gloria Allred and other people, and it's coming. You know, because yeah. because there's there's uh, again th these are open secrets, and I assume that we're not out of open secrets. That if, if you if you peer at that chest of what people know, there are still yeah. names kind of rolling around that have yet to explode in the in the popcorn bag. Yeah, and and all it does is you know give more opportunities to you know like big Jewish good looking uh, husbands of twenty five years right here. Uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, I, can, I can I can substitute for any of these dudes. Um, no, but it's 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 a shame that this has been going on so long, and um, there's just so many. Look, the, the the worst culprit of them all, and we can stop after this. Uh, the apps. Well, yeah, there are a few names being popped on the screen right now, but the worst culprit of them all, the guy who's done more damage to women and been so disrespectful, 
is still holding the highest office in the land. And yeah, that's our that's our biggest problem. That uh, that that's something that I talked about with Bonnie before the show was I was wondering how much of what's happening right now is is uh, built up pent up frustration at the one target that everybody would really like to take down or, or that a lot of people would really like to take down but don't have the power to do so. But that's as political as we're going to get. Hey, let's have some fun. It's <laughs> night court time. <laughs> yeah, so uh, all right, talk us through this, Bryce. So we've got people who sent in uh, their... Oh, there we go. Uh, we've yeah. had people who sent in their problems and have asked for uh, a ruling. So I've, I've, we've got five cases in front of the court tonight. And uh, let's just dive right in uh, for this first one. Brian, you're going to be the prosecutor on this case. Oh, good. I'm John Laroquette. I have a gun in my pocket. Um, uh, th that was one of my favorite things was in around the year 2000, I did a convention along with Harry Anderson, and he said uh. some nice, nice things about my magic show, but mainly he regaled all of us with tales of behind the scenes at Night Court, and he said, there is never a time on any episode of Night Court that John Laroquette does not have a firearm on him. Like, like, Whoa. like that's just his bag. He at okay. all times had like a gun in his sock ready to go. So uh, wow. if you'll excuse me, I'm going to put a gun in my sock. And uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm uh, ready to go. And, and the honorable and, and, and uh, Roy Moore, please uh, take his seat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so, got a gun with him all the time. So I'm going to okay. read. I'm going to read the claim here from uh, from our first case. Uh, my now wife listens to country music all the time and makes me listen to that crap. She doesn't like me listening to Bruce Springsteen. She calls it easy listening or the like. She and I were at the gas station when under pressure comes on the speaker, which she turned to me and uttered the egregious line, Jesus, someone is ripping off vanilla ice. I don't know why I don't go running away then, but she is so hot and so I stayed. Last week while in the car, Little Red Corvette came on and she looked at the screen and said, I thought it was Little Red Comeback. I am seeking payment for punitive damages in the form of blowjobs and for there to be a no country ban in our house or cars for one year, as it is horrendously hurting her brain. I would also add that she hates when I watch your show because she said it's just a bunch of yelling, which it is. I love yelling. That is from uh, my that's from my favorite Hendrix song is Excuse Me While I Kiss the Sky from South Korea. Uh, South Carolina. South, South, South Korea. Korea. It's going to be South, South Korea. Korea. That would be BTS from the AMAs. Go I'm going to decide South Korea. Uh, your honor. Oh, wait. If, uh, this case is called No Country. No Country Music for Old Men. Uh, and, 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 all right. So, so Brian is prosecuting for uh, the guy who wrote in, and I am. I yeah, am you have to defend. Defending uh, the wife. Your honor, I believe this case speaks for itself. Uh, uh, your honorable, uh, honorable Grunbergeness. Um, the. Uh, I, 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 I can't even. How to begin? How to begin? How to begin? Uh, uh, I, the defense, uh, the prosecution rests. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, I don't know what I could say that would be better than what was written here. I, all that matters is the defense. Do you want to lay out? A, just, no. Okay. Uh, uh, your honor, the prosecution is right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I appreciate that side of... Uh, you, by the way, thanks for doing your homework. I mean, really. <laughs> you brought so much extra... Knowledge <laughs> and uh, experience. And thank you for for. Aren't you supposed to like reference other cases? Uh, like, yes, uh, as I as you'll long... remember. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Redenbacher versus Redenbacher. I think made it very clear that <laughs> this case is a hundred percent right. And we're done. I would have thought you'd say. Pop music is dead, or no, no, wait, wait, wait. What do you do? Oh, yeah, pop, yeah. pop, pop. The like pop the ain't popcorn. no secret. <laughs> yeah. Pop uh, no oh. Secret. <laughs> all right. I want to hear the other side. All right. All right. You know, you, Your Honor, uh, <laughs> uh, right now, this man is probably writing up an email and sending it to some horse shit podcast. <laughs> right now. This man is thinking that not knowing every Bowie song is some kind of crime. Right now, this uh, a-hole is trying to solicit blowjobs from my client because she doesn't quite understand the lexicon of musical knowledge that he finds uh, necessary. Well, maybe next time he'll think before he writes. 
Country music is not a crime. This guy's a lecherous dickwad. And I find that this is a an offensive letter that should be thrown right out, Your Honor. Well, I sure do appreciate the way you've presented your cases here today. You're both very experienced attorneys and clearly very passionate. And I think your uh, your clients should be very proud of the way that you've represented uh, your sides. Now, I, I will always um, probably, you, most nine, nine times out of 10, I will favor blowjobs. It's just the, the nature of my court and, and the way I, uh, oh. Oh, you know what? Let's see. The, the boss is calling <laughs> Hold on. in. It's a, I think we're getting it's a, a late breaking event. A friend. That might exactly, be J.J. Yeah. Abrams calling in on this. Uh, right. We are. We, we are. I mean, if you both... have to take it, we're happy to listen in on the Should side, I? Your Honor. Okay. Right, yeah. Me. All right. This is, yeah, uh, there we oh, go. I don't know who this is. This is. No, I'm going to let this uh, go. H. Weinstein, apparently. <laughs> 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 Um, I am uh, I'm going to uh, go with uh, a brushwood side here and um, oh, God. Yeah, well, I think she should dig her key into the side of his pretty little souped up four wheel drive. Uh, by the way, ban from TV, my band has seats. played that song. And where did we play it? On American Idol. See, I might have to change my mind now. Mm. Uh, you know what? I didn't finish my. Uh, you know, I was gonna say Brian. No, I'm gonna go with Brian on this oh, one. Come on. uh, I'm a huge Springsteen fan, and I just I have nailed to. it. All right. Uh, uh, what's up, Bull? Overrated. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm Bull. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. you're Bull. Uh, well, now we've got our second case here. I'm gonna. Or you could be Flo. <laughs> okay. These are great references that I totally get too. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's man. our second case. <laughs> One of the people I live with is constantly playing audio over the speakers of his iPad while in the kitchen while I'm in the next room over trying to watch television. I've asked him multiple times to put in headphones and he refuses to do so, saying that since I'm playing audio loud over the TV, he should be allowed to play audio out loud too. My defense is that the TV has no headphone support while the iPad does. Am I right to ask him to put headphones in or is he right that he should be able to play his out loud. This is from Annoyed in Audio in Austin in a case called The Not So Silent Night. So Justin, you're so going to Let me just say, as a judge, I'm already very confused. Uh, so I, I want to really, you guys have to clarify for me. Sure. And I want yeah. you to state your cases clearly and passionately go. Uh, Justin? So Justin's going to be prosecuting on the case of the writer here that uh, his, his roommate should wear headphones in the kitchen. Uh, sure. Uh, all right. Your Honor, it is absolutely clear that one device is meant to be played communally and the other is a personal piece of technology. If you're going to play your loud-ass iPad wherever you uh, want, hither and none, we're going to have a lawless society on our hands where each and every person, from the kid playing Peppa Pig to some uh, uh, yahoo uh, with his, with his uh, clash of clans, is going to make audio pollution so loud the cacophony will crumble this very democracy. This person needs to be eye-fall or ear-butted up whether or not it's blue Bluetooth or corded. That's it. That's all. Shut it down, iPad dick. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, I believe the prosecution has made my case exactly. I do believe that there are some devices that are meant to be enjoyed on a person-to-person -person basis. You are meant to be isolated from outside sounds. I believe that all iPads, all iPhones, all tablet devices should be in your earbuds projecting directly into your ear holes but i don't believe that it's right for anybody holding an ipad to create a false equality and insist that every television must be muted and that the rest of the world must suddenly don headphones because they walking around with their private devices are broadcasting publicly i think it's an open and shut case everybody who has an iPhone, should use earbuds. Everybody uh, who's uh, watching uh, a TV. Ob objection, objection, your honor. Uh, 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 yeah. Objection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, private devices, sure. Private eyes are watching you. Watching your every move. <laughs> uh, your honor, your honor, your honor, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, objection. That's plagiarism. That's uh, Hall v. Overruled. Oates, Overruled. 1984. Overruled. 
God damn uh, it. Overruled. Shut all your right. pie hole. All right. All right. God damn it. Uh, anyway, uh, the point is there's no expectation that a television should be listened on earphones, but there is a, a, a expectation that uh, that iPods and iPhones should. Okay, so that's what I thought Justin's side was. I'm very confused here. We both Who's... agree, and apparently he did such a bad job at the prosecution that we both agree that the person who's complaining is right. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was in Starbucks the other day, and there was a guy in front of me and, in line, and he was on his cell phone, and he was, t- he was like, yeah, well, tell her then. We're, we're going to deliver the tile later then, blah, blah, blah. And he's, he's so loud. And I literally just pretended I was on my phone and I said, I'm so sorry, I can't hear you. The asshole in front of me is talking so loud that he wants, I mean, it was, it, it's, it's these devices. People feel like they're in a bubble. I, I agree with both of you. I think you're watching TV. TV is to be watched and the volume is, should be loud. I argue with my son, Jake, about this all the time. He walks throughout the house and uses the speaker on his uh, iPhone and listens you know, to um, private eyes. They're watching you. And it just drives <laughs> me nuts. So I, I, I don't know who I'm, I'm – again, I'm confused I get here. the win because I was actually defending the person that wrote in. And Brian there you go, Justin. You're no, 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 no. But, 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 but a sub-factor of what you were defending. Oh, hey, hey, the, the state is recommending a gag order on audible iPad noise in the kitchen during prime time and two weeks of doing the dishes as punishment. Judge, yes. could you rule on that? Yes, I completely agree with that. Dishes, I, I, I think, are the harshest and worst punishment ever. And that's exactly <laughs> what should happen. Could and then you can wear, he can wear his headphones while he's doing them. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. That, that, should also, that, should, that should count for two wins for me. <laughs> no, no, Science no. Brian own gold. You know, this is turning into morning court. Let's go to the next case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got our third case here. Last Tuesday, I got a prank call from three individuals who screamed at me that I was a, quote, Indian giver, and that I should, quote, punch myself in the face, and that, quote, train town is going down, whatever that means. It traumatized me, and I've been unable to answer my phone since. I'd like to sue for mental suffering for about $800, just the right amount to buy a nice 1940s Lionel train. This is from Train Lover in Tuscaloosa, in a case called Like Tears in train <laughs> um, I, I I assume I'm prosecuting so Brian will be prosecuting the claimant is seeking about eight hundred dollars or the equivalent of a classic model train. Uh, your honor <laughs> <laughs> your honor I understand that eight hundred dollars might sound like a lot of money a more reasonable sum might be eight dollars or maybe eighty dollars in to get scam to cash win. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Whatever this is brought a us of to this <laughs> situation, uh, yeah, $800 is an awful lot. Also, I'm pretty sure you submitted yourself to this by entering in our uh, uh, problem solver segments last week. Another case where the prosecution is acting as the defense. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, you know you're going to lose already. So I mean, like, ma- mainly I just don't want to pay $800. <laughs> uh, I'm already joke. plea bargaining God. down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You know, my uh, next negotiation you at least, for, right. for uh, if, I, if, I, I, if I get a chance to be in the next Star Wars movie, I'd like you to negotiate my contract. There you go. There you go. All right. Done. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused with what's happening, and I'm on the show. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, somebody, This is clearly from somebody who was a, one of the people we called on the Problem Solver segment last week. Okay, a bit we did last week. Again, with a lot of new viewers, we should be setting these things up and not assuming people know them. So we called this person last week on Problem Solvers. About his train issue, he he found a cool train and then sold it and then didn't want to give it up. And then we yeah. called him like we do. I, call, I called him an Indian giver. Yeah, and and said that train town <laughs> was going down. Going down, right? <laughs> and so he wants some. He, he can't pick up the phone. Yeah. So you now. you you, you want to you want to you want to uh, prosecute this case? Well, I mean, am I being given the prosecution now since <laughs> Brian has? I guess so, because <laughs> Brian was defending it. Yeah, I guess this, I was. This is a good debate club, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, go ahead, Justin. Uh, to prosecute it. It's very clear that everybody that harassed this man via telephone one week ago was super, super wasted. 
<laughs> this was something totally out of pocket. Uh, not only does this man deserve his pride and dignity back, but the little pittance of a couple hundred dollars is absolutely something that he should have in his pocket. In fact, I would move to localize where that money comes from and have it only come from the deep, deep reservoir of money kept in Austin, Texas. Objection. Objection, I, Your Honor. I, Objection, yeah, Your yeah, Honor. Yeah. This is unfair. This is... This is profiling. I will not stand for it. Uh, can, I, can I submit uh, evidence, Your Honor? Yes, please. Yes, please. Can I please submit as Exhibit A, proving that Brian is indeed a wealthy man, the song White People Rich, uh, uh, which uh, swept the nation? Uh, uh, all right. Wait, I, might, I, 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 might I suggest something? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. A random person so in I the audience. We keep it in the same room. So we have Train Town. And we also have the Monopoly money also in the room. So why not send... Which room is... A, a toy room. A toy, okay, <laughs> we're building a toy room. Do we have Exhibit A? Do we have Exhibit A uh, ready to, to be unspooled? I mean, he's not he's not wrong. I feel like... Uh, look, like, I, I respect the court and its procedures. Your Honor... Uh, yeah. I believe the prosecution is Next attempting time. to portray me as somebody as privileged and and Ooh, and, and alabaster. Please examine the following. Prices, right? Living in Texas, got three daughters. Who's the singer on this one? People rich, white people rich. Buy an Xbox One the day it comes out. Woo! White people rich, white people rich. Throw your hands up <laughs> if you is... have an accountant. <laughs> white people rich. White people rich. If you have life insurance and you're hooked on the premium. White people rich. White people rich. White people rich. White people rich. It White goes on from there, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, it's all there, Your Honor. Uh, that that is that is absolute in irrefutable evidence. Uh, Your Honor, uh, yes. uh, the defense has had a long and an illustrious career uh, involving many different times. <laughs> Uh, also, I, I did not, I'm not the one rapping on this. It's the prosecution. It's Justin rapping an accusation at me, which I believe should not hold any water in this negotiation. Uh, prove, uh, prove, I, I, uh, you don't know that that's me, that you're living in Texas. Got three dogs, <laughs> white people rich, white people rich. I mean, it's a great song. And uh, I'm glad we were able to plug it. I really do. I think that was really smart. I, uh, I, I don't think I want to reward any money in this case at all. I don't think this guy is, is entitled to a penny. As a matter of fact, I think he's entitled to go to jail and have a train pulled on him. Oh my goodness. Um, although I do not... Do not advocate, um, you know, uh, 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 Indian giving. You, know, you give somebody something, but it's the holiday time. You can't afford a train. You go on a show and you beg for money. I get it. I get it. But Fair, I, I, I think the presentation and, and the way you guys represented your clients was entertaining enough for me to sit through man, that. So, just, Justin, I, I, I got to tell you, man, I, I told you. Remember when I said we should have Greg Grunberg be our, our judge and you were like, no, he's not qualified for the position. He doesn't have a law degree. And I said, no, it doesn't matter. It'll be he'll be great. I thought he'll we understand. just decided not to throw people under trains. Oh, sorry. Uh, never mind. Uh, uh, what's the next case? case? All right. We've got uh, our fourth case today. And it goes something like this. I have a coworker who's always wants to turn every project into a ridiculous Rube Goldberg situation. It starts off with something simple as, we need a web page that collects data. Seems simple, right? But he always wants to take it way beyond the original scope, verging on the fantastical. For example, I know, we could search the data for keywords and assign a category and then send them a custom email based on the category. And then when they reply to the email to turn on and off the service. Uh, uh, this goes on and on. By the time he's done with his idiotic idea, we could have been done already. So I'd like to sue him for wasting my time. This is from Shut Up and Do It Already in Chat Realm. Please, please tell me that I I get to prosecute this one. Justin is prosecuting this one. And Brian Would will be... be... Brian will prosecute it too. <laughs> do you, go... All right. You go prosecute away, Brian, if you... We no, it's fine. It's fine. Time. I'll defend him. I'll defend him. This guy is uh, obviously uh, right. Uh, 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 all right. Uh, uh, in fact, I, I'm, I'm not even going to take this one seriously. I'm going to go full Southern lawyer. <laughs> Let's hear it. Well, now, your honor, it's very clear if you go ahead and read that little screed that there ain't no doubt in my mind 
that this man is an insufferable uh, penny pension, hole wishing, fox trotting, horniflower. And if you ain't got any sense there, then I will direct you to the point in which he says, just shut up and do it. I will suggest that the claimant take his own advice. The, the prosecution rest. Wow. Bill Cosby lived. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, yeah. I, move, I moved to the South and I became a lawyer putting pops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bill Cosby. I'm a Southern lawyer. I always yeah. bought pudding uh, pops. Pudding. All right. Look, uh, I, I, your honor, your honor, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to resort to explaining all of the foibles of the prosecution in in this case. I'm gonna I'm gonna evaluate it just on its merits. Uh, uh, what are its merits again? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, 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 the prosecution stands saying that this. Wait, am I the prosecution? You or the are defending defense? the you are defending the vic, the guy he's writing about. <sighs> yeah, so you're you're defending the guy who says, "Look, I, there is one way to do this, and it is the most complicated, most intricate, uh, dumbest way possible." So defend yeah. that guy. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> he's a he's a he's a he's a, a blue sky dreamer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Your Honor, this is a blue sky dreamer. <laughs> this is somebody who believes that all that is right in the world can be made right if we only believe. You know, it's the dour, pouty-faced poopy heads that are bringing down America. And if you want to side with them, well, then by all means, tell them that this dream isn't true. But, Your Honor, I think that you have what it takes to believe that all of us could come together to do the right things. Net neutrality. 2017. Peace out. Well, I think uh, the underscore buck has got it right. Buck, Brian is the worst lawyer on the planet. <laughs> um, I, uh, Poopy heads. I couldn't agree more. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what you have just witnessed is um, uh, the creation of fertilizer. You have, <laughs> you have actually sat here and watched two gentlemen. One, by the way, who I, I'm jealous of the accent. I adjusted. That was well done. That was really good. And uh, I don't know how. By the way, Brian, you can't defend this guy. This is the kind of thing. And I think in my old age, I, I've gotten more and more impatient with people like this. Um, although I do love my 85 year old father, he is that way. Like he just can't let things happen. He just can't do it. He needs to know ever how every step works. It's like, for God's sakes, they built the computer. So you didn't have to think about those things. So, uh, not only for the acting chops and the accent and the passion and the gobbledygook, but for the, the fact that I couldn't agree more, I am siding with Justin on this. Nice. Mm. Nice. All right. Good, good, good decision, Your Honor. Great decision. Thanks. Justice upheld. By the way, can I ask a favor? Yeah. Um, even, you know, after we finish this show, in life, when I see you guys, because I do consider yeah. you good friends, can you please yeah. always call me Your Honor? <laughs> uh, 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 it's going to go on forever. Uh, uh, just, it, it, uh, it, de it depends on how I do in the next round, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got uh, our final case here. Here All right. in the night attack court. Case the fifth and final. My ex-lover ended our relationship by putting a used condom on my front doorknob. Years later, I now work with her and her fiancé, and she's been nothing but nice to me. Should I tell him of our past from Definitely Not Kuhan in a case called God Damn It Kuhan? The claimant doesn't seem to realize this isn't Maury Povich, but okay. Problem solvers. You guys want to do problem solvers? Uh hold on. Wait, so let, let's let's just review this. I just want to I want to understand understand this. Sure. So they're in a relationship, and to end the relationship, instead of just putting a sock on the on the on the door, you know, because there's I want privacy or whatever, it's putting a condom on the door. A used condom. Right. A used condom on the door. And well, I, uh, I, I, they broke up as a result of that. And now it's saying, should I reveal my past indiscretions? No, right. should should he tell her current fiance? That she did that to him. Oh, okay. Okay. <sighs> okay, who's representing what? I don't know, but I seem to remember somebody being aggrieved after having lost their maid over just such an instant. Oh, my God. Are we <laughs> so... going to go there? Are we going to go there? Uh, Your Honor, I request uh, full disclosure. Uh, Please. Uh, I, I might be compromised because we lost our best maid 
after a used condom was found in the guest room uh, bathroom. Also, mm. it was Justin's used cost- condom. <laughs> So wait a minute, you lost your best maid to yep. Justin? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's not like she, she saw the condom and was like, oh, this is so good, I'm going to go work for Justin now. She oh, said, I'm oh. so grossed out by this used cos- condom in the trash that I'm not going to work for the Brushwoods anymore. And so wow. it was. <laughs> That's, oh my God. Well, you know what? We might have to find a new attorney for this. Day because <laughs> This is just not fair. Bryce, would you like to step in? I... I'm sorry. I'm I'm a little shell shocked. I forgot I forgot about that wrinkle of the story. I've heard that story before. Uh, that is a uh, classic, uh, classic. Wait a minute. So story. so which side of this are you on, Brian? I don't know. I I, I mean I haven't been assigned a you side. Just, ap- apropos of nothing, bring up the fact that you also have a story about a used condom. <laughs> I mean, first of all, that was not me. That was that was my counsel, Bonnie, advising me to share the story. I. I remain professional and ready to represent whichever side of this I need to represent. Okay. Uh, I would like to have submitted for the record that I wanted to flesh it and there was somebody <laughs> who I may or may not be married to that was very upset with that idea and and wanted me to throw it in the trash. So. Okay. Okay. So, so you were just doing the right thing. I was trying to be uh, polite, and, and instead I had to be environmentally responsible, and it cost a maid. Just following orders is not a good excuse. <laughs> I recommend biodegradable or edible next time, and then you shouldn't have a problem. Oh, okay. my God. That's crazy. Uh, so, so uh, Justin, you're, you're going to argue that he... Yeah, also, we're on the front page. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're going to argue that he should tell her, and Brian, you're going to argue that he shouldn't. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, look. There was once a moment in my life where I did something that was nigh unforgivable. I think we need some music I, here, and you need to drop your voice a few octaves. Dude, this is give this us that like, sad piano music. You got this. No, no, no. I think this is like, hey, baby. <laughs> oh, okay. There was that, oh, you want, there was you want that Barry? Time. You want Barry White? Okay, sure. Yeah, let's yeah. go, Barry White. Uh, well, now. We've all been in those situations where we cost our friends a maid <laughs> because you just can't control yourself. But ladies and gentlemen, if I can tell you one thing, I'd tell you this. That even in the throes of passion, you tell gotta it, own Barry. up to what you've done. And if you have yes. cost somebody a relationship, then you should pay the price. That condom was used, and you are used up on borrowed time. The truth needs to come out before the drip, 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 like that condom from your doorknob sinks you. <laughs> Hashtag me too. <laughs> Hashtag me too. Wow. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, well done. Well done. Okay, Brian, you're up. <laughs> Look, man, your ex was a, was a B-I-T-C-H, and, uh, and I'm real sorry that you went through what you went through, but there ain't no reason for you to sully her current relationship. Her current relationship, she's with somebody who is right for her. Trash loves trash, and guess what? Your trash found some trash. What are you going to do, pollute trash on trash love? No, no, that would be a terrible thing to do. So don't. All right. Yeah, I think I've heard enough. I uh, I think I agree with Brian. I got to say, you know what? That was a mistake. That happened in the past. That's a great story. And I want to hear more when you come on my podcast. An actor, a comedian, and a musician walk into a bar available now. But I got to tell you, I agree. Why rehash some, you know, experience like that you're in a new relationship she's in a new relationship let it go see this it, guy unless gets you're not it. over her unless see? you're not over her you know but I, I agree with you nice all right so who 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 won bryce oh justice uh, ju- justice wins yes <laughs> i wasn't keeping score what are you talking okay, about this is, you're right just court. justice this is won. Court. Uh, <laughs> and this no actually justice. this is the night attack court <laughs> All right. Thank uh, you, guys. Uh, hey, if you want to get Yo. in on early on stuff like this, 
join the Discord, nightattack.tv slash Discord. We have got all sorts of it, people. The, the the people in the Discord found out first that Greg was going to be on the show. So all sorts of behind the scenes stuff like that. Uh, you can get it at our Discord server. That's yep. for free, by the way. Go ahead and get on that Discord server for free. That's right. And uh, and enjoy a great time. Uh, Greg, we will not challenge you to stick with us for the rest of the show, but we do want to thank you for uh, hanging out with us. And we'll be uh, – I, I think both of us are looking at uh, joining you out in L.A. I'll make sure to let you know next time in, in the area, and we can both I, – I, I will show up live, live in studio for your Please new do. podcast. Awesome. And it's, it's always in a bar, so it will be either in my bar – or maybe we'll be at uh, Chili's. I mean, who knows? You never that's know. Great. But, uh, hey, listen, it's always happy hour, uh, Chili's. So that's that's it's good news happy. for everybody. Uh, again, an actor, a comedian, and a musician walk into a bar. Uh, if you are not, listen, we've been screwing around here, but it's only because Greg is such a great friend of the show and has been with this uh, various incarnations of this program for a really long time. Everybody, please, please, please go ahead and uh, support this show. Uh, write a review. Rated on iTunes specifically for new podcasts. That means a lot. So let's go ahead uh, and, and and support uh, that. And then also the Kickstarter, right? What is the Kickstarter? Yeah, the Kickstarter is Max Reload and the Nether Blasters. Uh, it's a movie that we're about to shoot. It's going to be super cool. Kevin Smith is in it. I'm in it. There's a, it, there's there's a lot of great stuff. It's it's all about the gaming industry and it's all about old games coming to back come back coming back to life, like the games from the '90s. Um, it's, it's a coming of age story and it's, <laughs> it's a low budge, really, really cool movie. That's not going to seem low budge. So go support the Kickstarter. It's fully funded. We're just trying to give away some really cool stuff from the gaming industry. So Dude, check that out. That is awesome. Thank you so much for joining hey, us, Greg. Oh, You're the best. Oh, oh, oh. I, I need to ask him one thing. Yeah. Yeah, please. All right. Just on the way out, we had this thing that, uh, we came up in the, in the pre-show, uh, are, are you going to pledge your support as a famous Hollywood actor to uh, a cause that we have uh, literally came up with like a half hour ago? Super important to us. This is deep Super in our important. hearts. All right. We want, when we do our live show in Austin, Texas, uh, for South by Southwest, to yeah. find a restaurant that will make steak nuggets for us. So just like chicken nuggets, but with steak nuggets. Instead of, uh, instead by, of by, by the way, not not yeah. for nothing. I don't want to downplay the struggle for people who are in the same place as us. But like, like we've had derisive laughter at the idea. We've had yeah. people act like that's just not oh. a thing people do. Um, no. I, I would say we feel a little bit disenfranchised right about now. Oh, I, I think you guys are onto something. I mean, I am all about processed food. So if you can process steak into a nugget. And put it in a shape that that is familiar to us, like a little duck, or maybe yeah. you know uh, a little goldfish or something. I am all a for boot. steak nuggets. I've been I've been smoking. I don't know if you guys are into you know the smokers. Not I, I was gonna get the green egg thing, and then I went with this Grilla Grills, this this grill uh, Grilla company. I am all about the meat right now, and all about this. I love the idea of steak nuggets. Okay. And I can I come can I come and, and protest with you or. Create right, steak with, nuggets on the street and give them out like at Costco, like as samples. Yes. Uh, 100%. We now have Greg Grumberg on our side. This is a yes. movement. Get on the right side of history. So courageous. Hashtag steak nuggets. See? Absolutely. Um, can, I, can I mention one more thing before I go? Of course. Uh, it is November. It is Epilepsy Awareness Month. Uh, my oldest son has epilepsy, and uh, I, I just want to give a shout-out to all the heroes, my epilepsy heroes, if you know somebody who has epilepsy, if you know somebody who is uh, living well with a condition like epilepsy, put out the hashtag my epilepsy hero um, or my shot at epilepsy. If, if, if there are any Ham Hamilton fans out there, we're doing this thing where you take a picture like the logo for Hamilton and it's my shot. Just recognizing people that are living well with seizures and epilepsy. And um, I, I thank you for letting me mention that. Go to talkaboutit.org. Go to epilepsy.com. Learn more about epilepsy and what to do if someone uh, you know has a seizure. That right there is David Axelrod uh, from CNN, who formerly uh, with um, you know, and, and this is his family. There's Susan Axelrod. They started something called Cure Citizens United for research in epilepsy. They're amazing people, and um, we, we're all working together to try and find a cure and to recognize people that are 
that are doing it, that are heroes every Dude, day. Dude, uh, you, you have this talent, Greg. You have this gift. You got me all misty-eyed just now. Like, like I, I felt that in that moment. I just tweeted out my epilepsy hero is my brother, Jay Schwood. Uh, at Jay Schwood, is, uh, he's working on Star Citizen, doing 3D modeling and animation. And we grew up uh, together with him dealing with ep- epilepsy and he luckily outgrew it but uh yeah. but uh hot damn i mean you you know that this is a a precious subject to yours truly i know it is and you've always always supported me from the smallest thing to the biggest thing that i've been trying to do to change perception to remove the stigma that's attached people don't talk uh, about it it's, by, it's by, scary, by the way oh, you, know? you you're more qualified than most uh to chime in on the etiquette of this somebody I didn't know how to feel when somebody tweeted me, uh, I watched last week's episode of Night Attack, and I laughed so hard I had a seizure. And then he follows up by saying, I took a break, I walked away, and then I came back and started watching again, started laughing so hard I had a second seizure. And then and so I know and, and, so, and so Bryce was was aghast, saying like, "Wait, wait, wait are you okay?" Yeah. And then uh, and then he's like, "No, no, no, I have seizures, you know, all the time, but this right. is the first time that laughter has induced them twice in a row." And it's okay, like, can I, can I can I tell you the reason why I love that so much, and you can identify with this, is that that person is talking about it. He's not afraid to tell people. Yeah. He could say, "Hey, I laughed so hard, I pissed my pants, I had to go change my and, and make a joke out of it." I thought you were joking at first and I was going to say you know what as long as they're talking about it I don't care if it's if it's an offensive joke I, I'm all over it but the fact that this guy has epilepsy and actually had a seizure because he laughed so hard and talked about it felt comfortable enough to talk about it that person is hashtag my epilepsy hero yes, yes! Here we go. well I I, I, go. I felt no hesitation in expressing that uh, uh, number one I'm glad he's okay and number two uh, not gonna lie, happy that's on my life achievement checkboard. <laughs> so let me just just give it a little tick mark on that. Equivalent of uh, breaking the backboard, we nailed it. Uh, 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 eat it, everybody else. Uh, all right, uh, Greg, thank you again so much. Uh, uh, get thank out of here before we just ask you what happens in Star Wars for uh, thirty minutes. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm losing signal. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> That guy knows how to make an exit. Smart guy. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Brian, what do you say we go ahead and check in on the Movie Draft Minute? Woo! Welcome to Movie Draft Minute presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of November 20th, 2017. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. It's Thanksgiving week here in the United States. Do you know what I'm thankful for? Every one of you out there in chat room. You are all amazing. So with that... Let's go check the scoreboard. Team Frog Pants are in 6th place, so winning for the first film. Team Feline is in 5th place, $150.6 million. Team Jury is in 4th place, $187 million. Team Big and Tall is in 3rd place, Justice League bringing $96 million, bringing the total to $208.2 million. Team Champions are in 2nd place, $271.8 million. And in first place, with Wonder bringing in $27 million, bringing the total to $306.6 million, it's Team Cord Killers. And that is your Move Drive Minute for the week of November 20th, 2017. Dude, Justin, I'm not going to lie, for the first time in this entire draft, I'm not entirely convinced that Team Frog Pants is going to run away with it. We're now at 307 on Team Cord Killers, and they've got uh, uh, the rest. Whatever Thor Ragnarok has left in his tank, let's say 40 maybe $50 million, uh, plus all of uh, the greatest showmen on Earth. Uh, all, all eight of those dollars. Um, no, I, I, I think showmen will do a decent 40, right? And and I, I think mm-hmm. that uh, Wonder has another you know 10 to 20. Here's my point, is it's not implausible that team cord killers could get to 400 plus million once they cross that fl- threshold all of a sudden it's possible that they could defeat 85 percent of the last jedi if last jedi really underperforms though right well i mean uh, what's the expected value for last jedi i don't know look at look at the the hsx but i mean also the other thing that we don't know is whether or not last jedi is really good and there is a chance that some of the buzz, the like behind the scenes, behind the scenes buzz is that it's really good. 
Yeah. Yeah. We, no, we don't know a a good Star Wars movie. Like a legit, everyone's like, you gotta go see this. This is great Star but, Wars movie. There, it's infinite money. There's no amount of money. That uh, we know I about. disagree with that thesis though, because I feel like like Empire was definitely the best Star Wars movie, and yet it was the least money making of the original trilogy. Right? That's different. That's a different world, though. Right? Well, why? I mean, why? Why is it different? Why is it different? Because now, I mean, the last Star Wars made. What, $800, $700 million? I mean, uh, everything's, uh, you know, inflation adjusted or whatever. Like, I mean, what I'm saying is is that the fact that, and let's say time stopped at 1988, uh, the fact that, that, that Empire Strikes Back was the least money-making of the three original movies indicates to me that the quality of the movie is only loosely correlated with the amount of box office that it makes. So so let's say it is the best Star Wars movie ever. I don't really know that that indicates that it's going to make the most money or even more money than the previous Star Wars. Well, no, I, I think that what would change, I, I think that it will suffer a little bit of, uh, I, I do think, my I've always predicted that, that uh, Jedi is going to be under Force Awakens just because I think that, for as good as Force Awakens was, there's a lot of people that were like, eh, it just kind of feels like something I've seen before. And and and, and the and the the buzz on it wasn't fantastic with random, uh, with, with random folks. But uh I do think that if it's like social coup, if it's like everybody's gotta see it and it becomes, you know, uh, uh something beyond what Last Jedi was in terms of word of mouth, like then yeah, I, I do think that that matters. I think that that matters a lot because basically that keeps it uh, making money like on weeks three, four, five, six, and seven, right? Yeah, I guess. And that and that's that's the biggest thing is that right now nothing is living beyond its first couple weeks. Except that's for the Thor. astonishing thing is nothing is made more than a hundred million dollars uh, besides Thor. Thor is the only. Hundred million plus thing this this entire season long. Justice is close and with ninety three. Justice will go over that because, but it made under that for this week. Uh, uh, it probably won't won't outgross Thor, which is bizarre that Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and the Flash in a movie can't do better than the Thor Thor movie, the third Thor movie. But I don't know. I, I still think that that it, it, this is Frog Pants's to to uh, to lose, but. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm. I'm excited uh, for Coco. I mean, too. You, a lot of uh, just just try try this on for size. Like I could picture a world where Cord Killers makes it up to let's say 420 million, uh, and then the Last Jedi. Because here's here's something we have not discussed on this show up until now is the possibility. Like, what if it's just a down season for for movies in general? Like I could totally picture a world in which Cord Killers hits 420. And then the last Jedi does five uh, five hundred and ten million or whatever, but that's not enough to take first place. I mean, so what? So then you would have last Jedi would have to be so what? You said four twenty, blaze it. Yeah, for, yeah. For let's let's killers? say cord killers hits four twenty, then uh, yeah. So then that's six hundred and fifty million dollars for. No, less than that. Yeah, no, I think it's closer to like five ninety. So you would say that it it is making half. Last Jedi is making half of what Force Awakens made. That's not accurate remotely. Force Awakens did not make a billion dollars domestic. Made nine hundred thirty something over the entire lifetime of the film. Certainly not in the time of the draft. Okay, well then, okay. So I'm sorry at the fifty percent, but it would be a huge drop off. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know that it would be, uh, what was the difference from a new hope to empire strikes back in their drop off? We'll see like whatever that is. I think that it's likely we're going to see the same kind of drop off on this. Uh, so like star Wars did 300 million in 1977. Uh, yeah, this is total tough. lifetime gross was four sixty. Of old timey money, like the first couple months of the first Star Wars, you know, would have got you around the hundred million range. Okay, and what what about uh, Empire? 
I, I it's another web page. Let me give me yeah. some time, please. I guess I guess I'm I'm just assuming if if there's a similar drop off from Star Wars to to Empire that we see with Force Awakens to Jedi, I think we're gonna. Be I right. do think that this is a bit of a that it is a bit of a different world. That, that's my my gut. Uh, but you know the early tracking is for a two hundred million dollar opening weekend for the Last Jedi. So if that's the case, then then it's totally reasonable to expect that they won't do more than five hundred million total. And if that's the case, then five hundred million means that Team Cord Killers could win. Uh, in well, how much time does it have? Well, I, I so so let's say they do five hundred million, and they're eighty five percent of that. So you end up with like what, like four fifty or so, uh, four fifty or four forty. Um, that seems like cord killers could get 440 or 25. So if it only made 500 by four weeks after Christmas, so we're looking at the end of January, Yeah, which means it will have been out for it's about five weeks, six, yeah, five or six weeks. Right. Uh, then yeah, if it does not get over 500 million, then there is a shot. And if they are below 500 million, then, uh, or sorry, that, yeah, then if it goes over that, then there really isn't. Yeah. And, and keep it, keep in mind, like I, I'm already assuming that, you know, my team is already screwed and I assume your team is already screwed, but it's like, I love the idea that there might be still a fight about to happen here. I don't know. Well, listen, if it's just getting to 420, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if we're totally out of it. But with Coco, Jumanji, and Molly's game, depending on what Coco does, Coco's are getting great reviews. Dude, Coco is the number one best-selling movie in the history of Mexico, full stop. It is the yeah. number one movie in all of Mexico's history. I mean, never know. You never know. That's true. Uh, shall we do a little bit of diamond time? Yes, indeed. You can shout out your projects right here on the show. Just head on over to reddit.com slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. Big ol' sticky post at the top of the uh, top of the Reddit will give you your shot to shout out your own projects right here on the show each and every week. We begin with Andrew J. Leather. Andrew J.L. Leather. Uh, hey, Diamond Club, Andrew here. My business is Andrew J.L. Leather. Uh, AndrewJL.com. I make custom leather cigar cases. I made one for Jury and Spearmint Nitrate. I'd love to make one for you, too. Check out my latest case. It's a shark. Nom, nom, nom. Over the past years, I've made a bunch of custom hand-tooled cigar cases. 16 for Perdomo Cigars. Uh, the owner, Nick Perdomo, ordered these cases for his reps. I've recently added skull and tentacle cups to my store. I use premium leather and Spanish cedar in all the cases. Pretty much any image or design I can put on a case for you. So please... Start smoking cigars, order a case uh, uh, to get them in time for Christmas. Wink. This business is my third job, trying to support my family. I work 40 hours during the day repairing arcade games. I work at Lowe's unloading trucks at night. In my free time, I work on leather orders. Plus, I'm type 1 diabetic, and I have a lot of medical bills to pay. AndrewJL.com. Check out the examples uh, in this Diamond Time link. Uh, just head on over again to the Diamond Time seg er, uh, section, and you will see... All those links. Although, Andrew, if you submit it again, I swear to God, man, get us some links we can say on the air. AndrewJL.com. Uh, meanwhile, above that, JF Dubow posts a diamond club and other assorted fuckos, uh, which would be a great. I would love to get like a like a polo shirt with that embroidered on there, diamond club and other assorted fuckos. Uh, I keep getting sidetracked, but here we go again. I have a new buck funding. I need pre-orders just Way too many pre-orders for the time I have left. A little bit of Romeo and Juliet, a bit of The Expanse, but mostly just robots doing robot things in the future. Check out synopsis, sample chapters, potential prizes and bonuses, and all that junk at bit.ly slash an, uh, sorry, Arcanandroid book. That's A-R-C-H-A-N-D-R-O-I-D book. Arc Android. Arc Android. It takes a while to get to the books, uh, but trust me, I worked my ass off to make it worth your money and your weight. It's hard to get all these pre-orders, but if anything has the power to make that happen, it may be the Diamond Club and the listeners to Night Attack. You guys are the best. Diamond Club symbol, JF. Thank you very much, JF Dubo. Absolutely. Uh, oh, crap. 
Uh, and finally, we have uh, Lord Nin. Hey, Diamond Group. I was hanging out in Justin Robert Young's fancy Discord, and Sunbun said they'd like an anyway, see you later, Kylo shirt. So I saw that as a challenge, and here it is. Illusions, totally unofficially Diamond Club fan merch shop. Uh, uh, head on over to uh, teespring.com slash stores slash fan dash merch dash two to, uh, to, get, to get a look at that anyway, see you later t-shirt. Yeah. Also, can we do... Uh, again, can we do this other one really quick? Because we didn't we didn't get this out of ranked mode on on diamond on the diamond club thread. Sure. Uh, this is from Keith Conrad. Uh, he says, uh, "Hello, Diamond Club, long time listener, first time Diamond timer. A few weeks ago, I started a new po pro podcast project called the Fake News Fairy Tale, where I try to take an extremely complex and angry." anger inducing topic in the news and explain it as a fairy tale last week i tried to explain that neutrality and the episode before that was supposed to focus on the paul manafort indictment but it just degenerated into making fun of cable news check out the latest episode at yellow420.com slash airy tale that's like fairy tale but without the f yeah uh absolutely you can shout out your project right here at uh, uh diamond time just head on over to reddit.com slash r slash diamond club and that big old sticky post at the top it's in green man can't miss it well hot damn dude i think i think we did it did, did we do it you know. Fe feels like we did it Kind of feels like we done did it. Uh, yeah, it feels a little bit like we're the kind of people that could just the day of a show call up a Hollywood celebrity who is in the latest installation of our favorite, most beloved movie franchise and just shruggingly say, yo, you want to join us to talk about, you know, random issues from people who, who write in? I mean, you know, the show's got stroke, dude. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who uh, uh, watched the show. And uh, man, is there anything else we got to do? Man, I tell you what we got to do is keep showing up every Tuesday night till the end of time. I don't think that's too much to ask. I mean, I'm in. You? Everybody watching can do is head on over uh, to twitch.tv slash night attack. Make sure you go ahead and hit that follow button. Uh, if you're watching us live, uh, make sure that you never miss wacky uh, antics here. Yeah. That's a fact. Uh, also, I think we learned that. <laughs> um, actually, I don't. I don't even want to bring up what Bonnie was saying. Uh, yeah, something about sizes and peoples and being a giantess. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't want to talk about uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein. Who no. Was, uh, we certainly, certainly don't want to talk about all the names that were swimming behind the eyes of our most illustrious guest. That yeah. he deeply wished he could just speak out loud. Oh, uh, the, the oh, power, no. power oh, went out. Oh, not at the very out. end. Not, oh. not, not the very end. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> see you later. See you next Tuesday. Tie to fire. Get a rope. <laughs> Get a rope. Night attack. Night attack. I love also, don't forget, uh, Black Friday, big sales, scamstuff.com, biggest day of the year. Good timing. Stickers are DIF.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>